It's no secret I love D&D Beyond. Just look at the past videos, scroll through them, you'll see I've got a lot of stuff about D&D Beyond on there. One of the things that I've been using a lot lately since I'm playing online is maps from D&D Beyond. And let's just take a look at one of these maps. Okay, so here I am on D&D Beyond. Let's open up, we'll do the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. Let's open up Dragon of Ice Fire Peak here. So if you look, we'll come to Dwarven Excavation. So you've got options uh, to look at the DM version of the map, but they also include a player version of the map. So if you open up the, D the DM version, we'll take a look. Open up the DM version of the map, and you'll see it shows you all the labeled sections of the dungeon here, and you even see all the secret doors. But if we go to the player version, Wait, there's all the secret doors. Okay, so clearly D&D Beyond has some problems. It's not a secret, uh, but the maps are especially helpful if you're playing online. You have your DM version that you can keep open in a tab. You've got a player version that you can share with all the players. If you use something like Roll20 or even Owlbear Rodeo, which is what I use, uh, you can upload the maps from D&D Beyond into each of those programs and you can use those to run your game. You can have your players log on to accounts and move their own tokens individually. You can set up um, all kinds of things like Fog of War and you can open up sections of the map as you go. Uh, but D&D Beyond has a problem with some of the player versions of the maps showing secret doors and secret areas and labeling them on the player maps. That is my biggest complaint about D&D Beyond uh, maps right now. Some of them, not all of them. Uh, the other thing is some of the maps are very large, which slows down gameplay on something like Owlbear Rodeo. Uh, I've had maps large enough, um, Hidden Shrine of Tomoachan, for example. I pulled the map off of that, and it's just such a large size map. When you upload it to Owlbear Rodeo, it gets kind of laggy on the website. Uh, trying to select certain areas to make them visible for players, it really slows down that website. Uh, and I think that's because of the size of the map. Usually when I was playing online, we were using smaller scale maps that I could put Fog of War up and move tokens around, no problem. But once I uploaded that larger scale map, uh, it, it slowed that website down. But anyway, back to D&D Beyond. With all of the new additions that I've been seeing come out with D&D Beyond, things like the encounter builder and tracker, the game log, all of these things I think are going to lead to D&D Beyond having some sort of native virtual tabletop. They're probably moving in that direction. I'm not sure when that's gonna happen, but I see that as the next step in the progression. They're gonna incorporate more of these tools uh, to help online gameplay. Uh, even things like uh, if you're using uh, Discord server, if you make a Discord server for your group like I've done in the past, uh, you can upload all of the uh, images and whatever uh, is available on D&D Beyond uh, to your players so that they can see it on their Discord server. Uh, so if you have handouts and things like that that come with the D&D Beyond adventure that you're running, you can just give those out. Uh, you also have regional maps, which I find pretty useful. Especially if you're running an adventure like Dragon of Ice Fire Peak, the regional maps are really great for that uh, because there is a lot of moving around uh, the area, different places to explore in sort of a more sandboxy environment that your players get a chance to be a part of. Uh, so regional maps are really good for that. And then dungeon maps, obviously, some work needs to be done for some of them, but all in all, I think they're pretty good. You just need to have some way to block off what players are seeing and if D&D Beyond, if anybody there is listening, hopefully you guys are working on something where player maps can be drawn on, cut out, uh, and let's DMs control a little bit more. Hopefully tokens or something like that will come along, uh, fingers crossed. So please work on that.
I hope you devs are out there listening. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Uh, these coming weeks, I'm gonna actually be featuring other virtual tabletops like Owlbear, Rodeo, Roll20. I'm even gonna throw in a little video about using Discord and D&D Beyond's Avray bot. For that, they've made some great improvements on it. Uh, so be sure to check back. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the DM and player maps in D&D Beyond. If you've seen any problems with D&D Beyond maps or you found something better, let me know in the comments. I'd love to check it out and uh, get an idea for myself and I'd love to share it with the community here on, on YouTube. Uh, also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Uh, you can also check us out. We're going to be airing new episodes of Saturday Morning War Tunes uh, next month. And we're starting a new session of our Adventure Guild, a D&D online game for kids ages 9 to 14. Uh, in April, we'll be setting it up for kids on the east coast of the U.S. So be sure to check that out. Uh, visit BeholdGamers.com for more information on that. So thank you guys again, and as always, have fun, learn lots. Backwards off Whoa. the carriage on top of the other guy, and they just go poof splashing together and into now the bloody water and now they're like yeah health department floating <laughs> down together yeah i know the health department is gonna <laughs> yeah and if the health department ever sees those two dead bandits with blood in the water who did this <laughs> it's a travesty to nature there's a druid somewhere down the river 